Is it is the candy cut of color in paradise? Um, <laughs> no, it's tough. Everything that happens in the States, as far as the entertainment industry is concerned, does affect us. And, you know, most of the shows, as far as anime titles <clears throat> are concerned, um, anime shows that come up to Vancouver usually come through California. Um, so, you know, when work slows down in a place like California, less titles are being shipped up here because they want to keep everybody working down there. So it does affect us. I mean, we're lucky in Vancouver in that, um, as far as the acting world goes, we do have a lot of, um, of prelay type, type shows, which I have a really hard time getting cast in, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so when the anime slows down, it, it affects me. But like a lot of actors, I'm no exception. I do have my real job. This is the dream job, obviously, right? But, um, you know, you can't always support yourself strictly on, on acting stuff because there's no guarantees in, in the entire, and we're talking, you know, even on camera right. Right, and stuff like that, there's no guarantees, so. Even in California now <laughs> also, you know, because half the scripted dramatic programs are disappear, it's all reality television. A lot more actors, a lot more writers are out of work, you know, because they, Basically, it's cheaper to produce reality TV for, for major networks than it is to produce scripted dramatic TV. I mean, cable channels are picking up a lot of the slack, but, uh, you know, it's still not there. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, and that's funny because you have, there are, I mean, like Canada, there, there are actors who do voice acting as well. And there are people who are just exclusively voice actors. And what's happening now is because there were a lot, there's, there's a lot less acting work in film and television for a lot of actors. They started looking at other things like, oh, I'll go into voice acting or video game acting. And they suddenly start calling us and saying, you know, I'll, you know, what do you do to get a demo reel? What do we need? You know, they, they, I get a lot of people who, who've never done voice work before who are asking me, I'd like to get involved with that. Because the economy, you know, everything sucks. <laughs> Especially, I mean, it's going to be rough even more so in, in L.A. Um, with all the big A-list uh, like movie stars and things that are doing all the Pixar productions and all the DreamWorks things. For people that have been in the industry forever <laughs> as voice actors, it's got to be frustrating to not even have an opportunity to work on those big, big, big movie shows, right? It's, it is unfortunate. And it's something I totally disagree with. I, I mean, with the, the idea that the only way to sell an animated yeah. thing is to have a, a, a lead role, a star in, in, as the lead role. You know what? Like, a lot of the early Disney stuff didn't have major, you know, they, they had no major actors involved with it. You know, they had good voice talent with it. And the same thing with, you know, when I heard the early Miyazaki stuff that they dubbed, you, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, yes, they had some stuff in there, but it wasn't, what you know, but it was like they had to get name people just simply for the sake of having names. We call it, we call it celebrity stunt casting. And Pretty much, yeah. And, and sometimes it really turns out to be horrible. Now, I've worked, I've had cases where they wanted, uh, you know, name actors in the projects I worked on. And uh, they were, they are great actors. Academy Award nominated actors, Emmy Award winning actors. <laughs> And I, you know, it's, it's nice that they're, they're interested in doing this, but you get them in the booth, and suddenly, especially when it's dubbing, uh, or, or even video game work where it's to a certain time frame, where you say, okay, you have to match the, you know, they don't understand that. And it's like, you're, you're, you're trying their hand. I tell them that basically what we're going to do now is tie your hands behind your back and bind your feet together, and now we want you to act. Because these people want to, you know, they're used to being on camera, and they act not just with their voice, but with their facial expression, with their body movement, body language, everything is their performance. And we're taking all that away and saying, now just give me your voice. And when you, when you lose all that, they lock up and freeze. So there are a lot of great actors out there, but not every great actor can be a great voice actor. And these people are very much underappreciated because of that. You know, these, they have a unique skill and talent that is very much underappreciated. So they need to be. They need more love. They need more love. My, uh, my second question. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was a long answer to the first question. Yeah, uh, that quick. Uh, yeah. Second question. Uh, 
I, I, I'm not sure what happened, but do you guys know what happened to Ocean Studios? You know well, I mean? yeah, um, Ocean is, th there's a, um, a misconception sometimes that is kind of funny for us as, as voice actors in Vancouver, that the Ocean Group is this cult. <laughs> or like, we, we kind of associate it with, it's a, a dormitory where all the voice actors live, like a big reality TV show. We all live in the basement, we all have bunk beds, and the little light goes on, and like, Paging Scott McNeil, Scott McNeil in the studio. And then Scott will hop out of bed, go running up there, record his thing, and then, you know, when he's done, and they'll release him back down to the door. You know? But um, in the actual, the actuality of it is in Vancouver, there's a lot of different studios, and Ocean Studios is just one of, of the several studios. Um, for me, it's the studio that I probably get the most work out of. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. I mean, a lot of people haven't done very many shows there. It just, it's just another studio that, uh, that we get to go to to record shows. So they're still around. Um, I haven't um, been in there too recently to do any, any anime stuff or, or other stuff uh, for that matter. But uh, uh, Gundam Double O was recorded there. And you know, of course Death Note was recorded there. It's just, I mean, for me, it's probably my most comfortable studio because I've been working there the longest. Also, the, the first, uh, oh look who's awake. <laughs> the, um, the very first cartoon that I got to work on was a show called My Little Ponytails. And, uh, oh, you guys watch it. Bad little boy pony. That was a bad, 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 bad pony. <laughs> mean pony, too. Um, but and that, that was the first time that I had set foot in Ocean Studios, so I mean, that was a long time ago, so I feel very comfortable there. But yeah, I think that answers your question, right? It's just a, a cool studio that I really enjoy working at. I think we only have time for one more question, so I'm gonna... Who, who has the next question? Okay. Um, do you get a lot of voice actors that want to, like, sing the theme song? Like, dub the theme song, or, like... <laughs> Or dub a song that's like played during the scene. Because I know Big Manana like dubbed one of the songs in Oran, but he couldn't use it because apparently in the ending scene where they used it, they get confused, the audience would get confused, so they just used another person to sing it. There are um, a lot of parallels between voice actors and musicians. It's amazing how many voice actors and musicians of, of sorts, myself included. So. I would absolutely love to be able to do any kind of singing in my little pony, I say. <laughs> but um, but there, there was a, a series that I worked on called Soul Taker. I don't know if anybody ever saw that. Not many people have. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Um, well, there was a spin off series of, from Soul Taker called uh, Nurse Wish Kabugi, which is a very strange show, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my character, who is kind of this dark and mysterious heroic type in Soul Taker, is essentially. Um, Zach Efron in, in, in the follow-up. He, he's like a one-man boy band. You know, it's, it's a weird transition how they got the same characters threw him in a different uh, genre and all kind of stuff, but kind of a neat idea. But yeah, so he had some songs, and I would have loved to do English version of the songs, but they decided they wanted to keep the original Japanese, which I totally understand. What's that? I didn't think that was actually. No, but it would have been a. It would have been a blast. I would have loved it. So I'm still hoping one of these days I will get to, because I'm Greg Ayers, worked on a, a show called Beck, right? And he got to sing. Like, and like you say, Beck, and, and I think it's happened a lot of times where even some of the actors that have worked on the show will sing the, the opening uh, theme song and stuff, right? I would love to, but nobody has. No, I no, just haven't had the opportunity, and um, not much has. I know Shannon uh, Chankant, who uh, plays Misa, in Death Note had, had an opportunity to sing a little bit in that, right? So, I'm jealous, but uh, yeah, maybe one day I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Lisa's a pop star, so. Lisa's kind of a big deal. Well, I would absolutely love to sing anything, but I can't sing, so. Oh, not with that attitude, you can't sing. Uh, and I, I don't have much to add to it. We've done a couple of shows where we had to sing something just simply because we had to they didn't have the copyrights to the song, and we had to dub it over. And to, at one time, I remember on a show called Licensed by Royalty, there is a song that was supposed to be sung in English that's supposed to be the MacGuffin of the of the show. It's supposed to be the motors that were on there for the bad bomber setting up these bombs. 
and the guy who wrote the lyrics in, in, in Japan, the English lyrics, obviously had never taken an English course in his life. But he was like, on uh, Friday, cook, sleep, beat me out. I was like, what is that? How does that mean? So we had to rewrite the lyrics. And, and That's beautiful, it. man. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, you know, so we did, we had to do it for that. But, uh, you know, it depends on the situation. Uh, I know some fans love to have the original music in there, the Japanese. And I'm sure actors would love the opportunity to sing stuff, and, and I know, you know, it, it's great. And I love working with actors who are singers because they really, they, they, they have an excellent sense of internal timing and they work great in the booth, and it's always a pleasure working with them. And again, it is, it is kind of the musician crossover that I was saying. I was having a conversation yesterday and you know, drummers and bass players yeah. generally, yeah. yeah, right on, unite. 